if she thought she was obeying God. Well, they do portray themselves as God. I know that I've had the voices, and they do that, but I have managed to fight that. But back then, you know, who, who knew what happened? You know, a lot of people are falling prey to these voices, and they're doing what they're told. You know, they're committing suicide or homicide. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's just a very important part to get out. What was Butler County like in Missouri? Why was it so strong in Satanism? And what happened on your grandfather's land? Um, your step-grandfather, uh, was it Jack, Ch I don't know if I had his name right, Chittenden, Chittenden? Yeah, it wasn't the grandfather's, it was the stepdad, it was Jack Chittenden's land, it was behind his land, and that little piece where the mass gray was may have been uh, actually a piece of government land, that it had guards around it, and the house we was in, we was like supposed to be the guards of it, well, him and his wife was, I wasn't. Which reminds me, we actually did find survivors because people that were killed usually were, they were drugged with uh, heroin and kept alive until they got to Butler County and the second um, shot was supposed to OD them on, on heroin. When you talk about the mass graves on his property, what happened? Were these people killed ahead of time or were they murdered in satanic rituals on the property? Uh, on the property because we had survivors which told us they were kept alive until they got to the to uh, Butler County. But we was we was one of the headquarters. We thought we were the number one headquarters because there was so much killing that went on and so many people were brought here. It was non stop and it was three decades. I was about thirty years old almost when this when we finally exposed it in eighty four. So that was three full decades of my life that it was already going on, and it was nonstop. There was no reason for them to stop because they knew everything was sold in tight, and it meant that no one was ever going to get into the county to stop them. There would never be a federal investigation or a state investigation, and they felt plenty safe to travel in any state they wanted, kidnap people and bring them back here. And when I was a little girl and I couldn't figure out why does no one ever just happen to stumble across this, it's because so much law enforcement was involved. The highway patrol's job was to escort people from one county line to another or one state line to another while they're still alive. There was not going to be no accidental catching them as long as that was going on. Who were the victims? Who, were, who was being killed? Men, women? children, Christians, Jewish, minorities? Well, it's strange that you ask me. It was anybody they wanted, but they did pick out their victims before they went to get them, just like they picked us out. I discussed that with a few people, and, and the survivors that we were finding were Jewish, Jewish blood. Even Marcia Mason, it was kidnapped out of Atlanta, Georgia, and I remember her more than anybody else because I spent more time with her and we got her back to Atlanta, and I had her to contact Dan Rather for me. The reason I did is because our, our post office was taken over. We don't know how they did it. Did, did certain zip codes kick out where we couldn't get mail to ask for help? We don't know. We don't have all the answers. But we couldn't get anybody in here to help us. But it was Marsha, thank God, that got Dan Rather in him. I talked to him not too far from that mass grave, and that was as far back as 72. And he had already got his evidence and was waiting on his ride to pick him up when I went to meet him. And the reason I asked her is because he asked the tough questions whenever they got together for press conferences and stuff, and I trusted him. I didn't think he'd say, no, nah, just blow this one off. I figured he really would show up, and he did. Thank God he did. How many people were in the mass graves, and did you ever have to witness this? Were you ever forced to witness a satanic ritual? Yes, I've seen some of the killings, and they, they're brutal. Now, they tried to isolate me and keep me from knowing too much because they didn't trust me and because I had swore to get my own military to go on when I was just a little bitty girl, and, and I didn't know a whole lot about military, but anyway, I still swore revenge. And so, yeah, they kept me pretty much out of stuff as much as they could, but I've seen a little bit of the murders. Unfortunately, I had to see that, but I had to because no one else was going to tell the truth about what happened to that person unless I watched. And if they had me there, uh, like one time I was pounding on my head, they wanted me to stand back seat. They didn't want me to watch, but 
I had to, and I worked three murders that day, and we had the highway patrol there and the sheriff department there, and it was really brutal. You murdered three people that day? Mm -hmm. Yes, these were people that were traveling through the county. Was this on a satanic altar and actual sacrifice to save? No, it was right on the, on the highway. On the highway, but was, do they actually, is this considered a sacrifice to Satan? Or to them, anyone they kill is a sacrifice to them. But it doesn't have to be on an altar, it can be anywhere. Right, in, at the mass grave site. The, the mass grave site that I saw was brand new. Where the other ones were, I don't know, but this is the one that I can talk about because it's the one that I've seen. And it was three piles of body, and there I had to guess at how many bodies I thought was on each one, and it was about probably about a hundred each. And this was at the same time. Well, this graveyard is the reason that uh, we got Interpol agents in here to start gathering evidence against the government anyway, because we didn't know what to do. We weren't getting anywhere. We were trying to figure out how we could gather up evidence on them. But there was so much infiltration, and we realized that is why Eric Clefton contacted Interpol and got them in here. How do they choose their victims? Do they look for people who are alone? Do they look for people who are single? Do they look for small, unattended children? How do they select their victims, and why do they do it ahead of time? Every kind of way they can, and there are some random victims where there just happens to be no one looking, and so they get someone. But many, many people are already chosen because they're either affiliated with being called a Christian, and our churches are infiltrated really bad. It's not just the Catholics. They are everywhere. And people are chosen because they have Jewish blood, them and their relatives and so on, you know. And they put them under surveillance like my mother and us kids was. And when they choose the right day to get us, they get us. And as far as I know, they didn't watch my mother for very long when they took us away, just a real short time. I've read uh, your story on the web, and I've talked to you previously. And Satanism is connected with... Uh, the Nazi movement and the New World Order. Do you believe this country, or maybe this world, is moving towards a New World Order and a new Nazi Germany? Well, we, in the old days, you know, back in the 60s, we were saying that World War II never ended. It just came to the United States, and it's been kept out of the media. So, yes, we have always believed that, but anything that was a Satanist to me was a Nazi. It was all the same thing. You talk a lot about Nazi infiltration in your in your interview. And from what you've uncovered and from your experience of living with a Satanist family and being under Satanist persecution, you, you say that they're infiltrating every level of our government yeah. and our other structures as well. Yes. Yeah. Anything that was called a department has Nazi infiltration, even the Department of Education. Yes, they're there. In the churches, too, right? Yes, the churches. Real bad in the churches. It, it isn't just the Catholic Church or the Mormon churches where you hear about this kind of stuff, but the Nazis have to be there with us to be among us so they can pick out their next victim, so they can decide who to destroy, because they're all about death and destruction. Well, it's not just about picking the next victim, isn't it? Uh, the next victim plus moving into a new world order uh, right. like Hitler wanted. Hitler thought that he would be leader of the new world order, but of course he was defeated. If they secretly begin infiltration and have since the, day, and the ending of the war, you know, they came over here to the United States and they probably spread out globally and they're building, um, do you think that we're moving towards a new world order movement? Because many people... I have websites out now that say, fight the New World Order, you know, it's here, it's secret, it's coming upon us, and we have to keep fighting. Right. Well, well, yes, it, it's here, but it's not a 100% takeover. I, I actually believe the 100% takeover, that's going to be with, like, World War Three, and we grew up calling it Armageddon, other people call it other things, you know, but the New World Order, yeah, the total takeover, which, by infiltration, they... They can't do that in this country now because we're going to prevent that. It's hopefully, we got a whole bunch of them. We may not have got all of them. I looked up an old school friend and found out that there's still some of this going on in Tennessee, and I said, 